Hello, everybody. This is continuing my live blogging of um, this book of interviews with uh, Zizek that was published in French in 2010, Across the Real or Through the Real. And uh, we're in chapter two called the object uh, Lacan. So at the end of chapter one, Zizek um, presented his thesis that psychoanalysis is not um, to be restricted just to the couch, but um, is to be extended to the whole of the culture in his own slogan, everything is to be analysed. So Lacan is uh, um, to be analysed as um, an object of uh, uh, de desire, but also as a speculative uh, object. The first, there are three sections for chapter two. Master Jacques, here um, we get a continuation of uh, Zizek's distinction between two approaches to the unconscious. One uh, uh, approach that he calls Jungian or Joycean, that's the vast flux of pre-reflexive consciousness or stream of consciousness. And he calls that uh, as well uh, 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 an unconscious um, approach by means of folklore and Lacan um, is in rupture in absolute rupture with that approach so the key idea that we take from that is um, the uh, for Lacan, uh, the real is not something out there, um, outside of reality as yes, some sort of in in informal uh, or cha chaotic substantial rea real, but is um, uh, a pure surface, which is at the same time a uh, distortion. So the real is the distortion of uh, uh, reality rather than that which is um, behind uh, reality. This is where we get the distinction between three different types of uh, real. The monstrous real, which is the imaginary real, the purely uh, formal or symbolic real, um, which is the symbolic real, and the stain, which is the real real. Thanks to that, um, we get uh, an analysis of um, Zizek's differences with um, Lacan. So he has different readings from Lacan. Lacan didn't read Hegel or um, very incorrectly across uh, uh, Kojivian filters. Lacan um, was conformist instead of being revolutionary like uh, Zizek. And uh, uh, Lacan and Jacques-Alain Miller um, was uh, in favour of detachment rather than engagement. And these are not just sort of ethico-political um, and academic um, uh, differences. There's a, a difference as to the uh, role and nature of um, the encounter with the, the real and how um, uh, 
you return from that encounter either on a mode of uh, sort of stoic detachment or on the mode of what Zizek calls uh, fidelity. So sort of to clarify uh, a little more um, these points that crystallize around the notion of reading, so how um, uh, we must read or how people have read uh, Lacan and how um, what readings Lacan um, um, had of other thinkers and his differences with them. Uh, we've got section two, the readings of Lacan. Here, um, Zizek uh, uh, is quite um, uh, in praise of Jacques Alain Miller's pedagogical uh, manner of making unclear uh, uh, Lacanian uh, passages clear. So he says, uh, Zizek says that his Lacan is um, uh, Miller's Lacan, but uh, he differs from uh, Lacan in that uh, he rejects a, um, a teleological reading of Lacan that uh, La uh, Miller still practices. And uh, this idea of a teleological reading um, is uh, centered on the interpretation of uh, the real and of this blinding encounter with the real that Miller says it's um, not in the early phase, it's not in the middle phase, and there's some passages in the late phase where uh, uh, that's it, that's the 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 real of uh, Lacan. Uh, sometimes Zizek talks like that, but he um, rejects this teleological reading, and in particular, he re rejects the idea of interpreting um, everything uh, retroactively in terms of the last um, topological phase of uh, uh, Lacan's thinking, which is a little strange. It's like he's saying there's a bad quilting point there. And Zizek's quilting point is the stain, the real that, um, that is constantly escaping civilization, but that um, sticks to us and that we can't get, get rid of. So uh, in effect, this is the quilting point that lets him um, uh, retrospectively understand uh, everything uh, that has gone before in Lacan's work and sort out um, what, uh, what basically is um, uh, Lacan, uh, the, Lacan's folklore and what is uh, his real contribution. So one could wonder um, What's the difference with Miller's reading? I think uh, Miller, uh, from that point of view, is, um, according to Zizek, is not di dialectical, is not um, uh, a retrospective um, um, posing of the, the conditions of um, Lacan's um, thought. It's saying, uh, that this thought is constantly um, going towards one point that he may have uh, um, acceded to in uh, a few passages at the end, whereas um, Zizek's uh, reading is more um, truly dialectical in that it is the sort of um, speculative 
uh, uh, retroactive interpretation. Here he also talks about not just our readings or other readings of uh, Lacan, in particular um, Jacques Alain Miller's reading, Francois Balmez's reading, which he thinks is a, a, a genius level reading, and uh, he, Zizek's own uh, reading. Uh, he talks about, once again, Lacan's readings. He's already considered Lacan's readings of Hegel and what was inadequate. Here he considers Lacan's reading of Heidegger and he, and he Zizek, uh, approves the fact that despite um, uh, uh, allowing himself to be massively influenced by um, uh, Heidegger, Lacan um, resisted on one point, the point being the subject, and uh, clung to, insisted on uh, the um, preservation and the utilization of the word and the concept of the Cartesian subject. So that's where we were uh, last time. And so, uh, oddly enough, this insistence on the subject uh, leads to a distancing, Lacan's distancing of himself with uh, Heidegger in um, the approach to language. Instead of giving language the su uh, supreme privilege, in which case we just have to listen to language and um, in to that extent, desubjectivize ourselves. Uh, Lacan insists on the subject, all the while maintaining the importance of language, and that leads to the consideration of language as something that, um, that tortures the subject. So there's this relation of suffering between being and language, which you can't find in Lacan, but you can't find in Heidegger. So to continue, um, Fabian Tarby continues, but uh, one can nonetheless, up to a certain point, uh, turn the relation around. One can um, deploy or manipulate uh, language. Zizek replies, but mani manipulate it uh, how? Rather than um, being close to Heidegger, I think that Lacan is much closer to um, the Austrian writer that I don't like, by the way, um, Elfrieda Jelinek, that I don't like because of her obscene artistico-pornographic writing. Elfrida Jelinek, uh, who is a Nobel Prize winner and uh, is the author of uh, the, the, the Pianist. She says that language left to itself is a combination of lies. We must torture language uh, to make it uh, say the truth. I like this idea. I think that one must think in language, but against language. Poetry is the greatest torture that one can imagine. Think of the sonnet. To go even further, the question is to know um, of what empty subject one is speaking. So, this is a call back to um, the first part of this chapter where just at the end of the first part, Zizek says, finally, 
I want to say that even uh, in Lacan's work, things are more co complicated than uh, the moment, the final moment that you evoke. Uh, Fabian Tarby uh, evoked as the final moment uh, the notion of the um, empty subject. And Zizek says, um, it's not only a question of a confrontation with uh, nothing or emptiness. What? What nothing? There are, there are uh, several different nothings. So he's coming back to, uh, to that. There are several different uh, empty subjects. To go further, the question is to know uh, what empty subject uh, is being talked about. Everyone knows the expression that I don't like, um, to throw the baby away with the uh, bathwater. Well, psychoanalysis is the opposite. It's a question of throwing the baby away, but keeping the bathwater, the dirty water, the symptoms. That's what makes up every uh, great critical analysis. What one does in free associations is to get rid of the baby, the ego, and to let the dirty water it, itself speak. Jacques Mil. Remember that uh, Zizek, in his uh, analysis, as he described it in, um, the in the beginning of the first chapter, said that he came to analysis with a, a problem, a desire to commit suicide, um, that he got rid of in uh, uh, three months. And then he went on uh, for another two years uh, to talk as much as possible to uh, prevent uh, there being any um, uh, spaces for the analyst to say something, to intervene or to ask a question, and so to avoid um, the possibility of change. To a certain um, degree, we can say that the desire um, to commit suicide, this sadness um, in the face of a failed love relationship was the baby. It was an ego problem more than anything else. And um, that was gotten rid of by um, the analysis by means of um, the uh, making the dirty water talk. And then the dirty water kept on talking in the form of a uh, massive um, uh, hyper uh, expressivity and resistance. Jacques Alain Miller has developed in a very uh, beautiful manner, the real status of uh, free associations. Real in the sense of the coincidence of opposites. So that's um, another qualification of the real that Zizek is going to um, uh, explicate further, uh, almost straight away. So um, there are psychologists who affirm that free associations are, are impossible or free association is impossible, that one cannot suspend judgment, that one always cheats like Zizek did, uh, that one never really gets to such a state. But Jacques Alain Miller has shown that this uh, critique is not uh, well founded because in the cure on the couch, everything that one can say, even um, that which was. Uh, um, that we projected to say that, that which has been um, planned has the status nonetheless of a free association. 
So when Zizek was um, talking nonstop, inventing, even inventing symptoms just to go uh, on talking, um, so as uh, planning the session in advance, so as to avoid free association in uh, the context of the analytic uh, session that was already in itself a form of uh, free association. That's the thesis of uh, uh, Miller, and that's why Miller says it works whether um, you cooperate or you think you're co cooperating or not. So, um, Zizek is now going to take up the theme of um, the real as the coincidence of opposites. And he's going to distinguish um, three uh, statuses uh, for that concept. So dividing it into three concepts, in fact. So in Lacanian thought, there are three statuses for the coincidence of opposites. I'm calling it one. Uh, first, he doesn't say first, but he distinguishes it uh, that way. There is the status of the imaginary. I, I myself am another. There is next uh, an identity of opposites in the symbolic order, which uh, goes uh, through the master signifier all these very beautiful uh, formula about the quilting point, the point where the signifier falls back into uh, the signified, which supposes uh, uh, a, a turn, could be a trick, but uh, a tour, um, uh, I'll say a turn, by which there is an identification of opposites. Now for the third point. But the coincidence of opposites uh, th that is the most radical is uh, achieved according or is effectuated according to the real. A uh, great mistake of several Lacanians is to insist too much on the real as impossible, something which uh, always escapes us. Yes, it's like uh, enjoyment, it escapes us, it always escapes us, but the problem is rather that what we can't get rid of it. Enjoyment is like the stain which pursues us always. A certain modality of the identity of opposites uh, occupies, in this sense, the very heart of the Lacanian uh, real. This is why there is always a duality in Lacan between um, jouissance or enjoyment as a primordial substance, which must be limited and um, prohibited. So that's the jouissance uh, as the, the chaotic real that has to be disciplined and um, put um, into some form and the so between that and the surplus enjoyment one prohibits but it um, one prohibits enjoyment but it um, comes back under the mode or in the mode of surplus enjoyment so that's the, the third and the most fundamental, if you can say that, um, but the, um, the most important um, coincidence of, of opposites as definitory of the real. My thesis is that one must conceptualize this opposition as a, a temporal pro process. Conventionally, Okay, here we're getting into the notion of um, uh, uh, normal time, 
both causal uh, normal time and logical um, normal time. Conventionally, um, or normal logical time, conventionally, we would have first um, full impossible enjoyment uh, that with um, the entry into uh, the symbolic order, we reduce. So that would be a, a logical order. First, the formless, um, full uh, enjoyment, that is impossible, impossible in particular to, to symbolize. And then we get the entry into the symbolic order where it is uh, delimited and prohibited. But it's reduced, but um, it returns as a uh, surplus enjoyment. That's almost what he seemed to be saying, but he's pointing out the nuance in what he was saying. No, if we want uh, a true temporality, um, it must be uh, the surplus enjoyment that comes first. This idea of an impossible substantial enjoyment, of an impossible substantial incestuous enjoyment is only a retroactive uh, effect of the surplus enjoyment. So that's the um, Hegelian move of um, speculative retroaction that many Lacanians are, um, are blind to. And so they condemn themselves to be, despite their refinement um, in this way, in to this extent, um, folkloric, um, they're in Lacanian, they're in, in Lacanian folklore, um, and they haven't um, uh, achieved um, the speculative concept of the real. Fabian Tabi adds, uh, talking of um, uh, surplus uh, enjoyment, I suppose, because there's there's no um, uh, there's no pronoun. He says fabricated by the symbolic in this case. Question mark. Fabricated is. Um, an adjective in the masculine form. The two possible antecedents are enjoyment, which is feminine in French, jouissance, and um, plus de jouir, which is uh, masculine in French. So uh, plus de jouir, sorry, surplus enjoyment. So enjoyment is um, a feminine noun. Surplus enjoyment, the way it's said here, is a masculine noun. He um, asks his question uh, with a masculine adjective, so it must concern um, uh, surplus enjoyment. I say this because maybe some people will be tempted now that I've been reading and translating this to um, get hold of this book. It's only, well, it says here, 18 euros. It's not all that expensive given that for me it's an amazing text and um, uh, I recommend people um, to check the French some of um, uh, uh, Zizek's inaugural texts were in French uh, first we're lucky that most of them uh, have now and they have been for a long time in English first but um, Sometimes things are translated without being sensitive to what is the antecedent, what is the uh, uh, seemingly boring uh, considerations, what is the um, uh, gender of the adjective, but that can um, really change the conceptual um, uh, framework of what is being said. Anyhow, so Fabian Tabi says, fabricated by so talking about surplus enjoyment, fabricated by the sim symbolic then? Yes, says Zizek. Um, we must here be very precise, which is what I've been trying to do. 
um, we must absolutely avoid centering the analysis on the idea of a pre-symbolic real, followed by uh, a, a symbolic um, work or by a work a work of the symbolic, a working um, a, a work over by the symbolic. No, the uh, most beautiful formula of Lacan is to be found, I think, in Encore. So I think that's Seminar 20. Um, in French, it's just Encore. In English, it's um, on uh, female sexuality, blah, 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 and Encore as a subtitle at the end. So the most beautiful um, formula of Lacan is to be found there when he says that the real is only the impasse of formalization. So that's a pretty um, uh, canny for formulation of, of Lacan's, but it has a, a great deal of conceptual um, finesse to it. Gijet goes on. One must take it literally and seriously. Um, this does not mean that the real is a hard uh, kernel which resists symbolization. That will be um, the uh, other idea of the real as a um, substance outside symbolization that then gets um, uh, symbolized and so reduced uh, and whatever doesn't fit is um, uh, evacuated um, and prohibited. That So it does not mean that the real is some uh, hard uh, kernel which would, uh, which is supposed to uh, resist symbolization and which would introduce inconsistencies and um, dead ends. I wonder if impasse, I wonder if that's the word um, he uses in, in French to um, translate uh, deadlock, because deadlock is uh, a favourite word of uh, Gijex in um, English, and um, it's difficult to see what else it could be uh, translated as in, in French. So maybe it's, it's that, otherwise it's an impasse or... I did it. No, the real is totally imminent to the symbolic order. It's the impasse or the deadlock as such. The, the deadlock comes first. And that's the not all of Lacan, or that's Lacan's not all. So we're um, ringing the changes on the um, formula from the, the last section. Is it the last section or is it the beginning of this section? Where um, the last section, where uh, page 26, so the section one of chapter two, where Zizek states the real is a pure surface, which is at the same time a distortion. So he is saying um, the uh, the distortion comes first. The deadlock, the impasse, the dead end come first. So um, that's the real. And that is also, for the same reason, the not all. Okay, I've done it. That's um, the end of um, uh, the second uh, uh, section uh, of chapter two. So I hope to continue. I hope to receive some sort of um, encouragement because I don't know uh, how long I wish to continue. I'm not sure um, about doing the whole book. I've got one more section left um, 
to do in chapter two. It's called Feminine Masculine. And chapter three is called Hegel in the Mirror. So um, that probably is of um, great interest. So with a bit of encouragement, perhaps if you're lucky, I'll do chapter three as well. Who knows? So thanks for listening. And um, love your impulses.